Northwest Liberty News. What they have done and the lies that they have casted upon my father and my family has only been, uh, you know, done in an effort to uh, demonize or to isolate, firstly, you know, to get to isolate my family, then to demonize them and so they can destroy them. And the same thing's happening up in Montana. They're trying to, to you know, cast this anti-government uh, fear, uh, you know, mongering among the people because that's how these people work. That's the realm in which they work in it. They work in fear uh, and, and uh, they react. They try to get people to react off of fear. Um, it usually never works. It usually backfires because in general, people you know, don't respond to fear the way that those that are trying to cast the fear want them to. Hi, thanks for joining me here on Northwest Liberty News. I'm your host, James White. And in my continuing quest to promote the upcoming event this weekend here in Whitefish, a new code of the West, uh, that's a seminar that's going to be coming here to the relatively sleepy Flathead Valley compared to, uh, to other places that I've lived, certainly. Um, but uh, in, on that vein, we have uh, one of the featured speakers with us on the uh, on this uh, show here today. And uh, I'm delighted to have Ammon Bundy joining me here for the broadcast. Now, Ammon Edward Bundy was born in Nevada on September 1st, 1975. And he's an owner of a commercial fleet maintenance company who led the 2016 occupation of the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge. He is the son of rancher Clavin Bundy and Clavin's first wife, Jane Marie Brown Bundy. Ammon was a central figure in the so-called 2014 Bundy standoff, which I was uh, happy to be a part of, regarding a dispute over grazing fees. Ammon and his wife, Lisa, have three daughters and three sons and reside in Emmett, Idaho. He also has, are you ready for this, folks? 46 nieces and nephews. Ammon Bundy, thanks so much for joining us here on Northwest Liberty News. Thanks for having me, James. Well, you're quite welcome. You know, this uh, this is, I think we've inter I've interviewed you two or three times. It's always, uh, it's always a pleasure to speak to you, Ammon. Now, uh, the reason I wanted to get you on the air here today is to talk about uh, the event that we have coming up here this weekend that I, that I mentioned briefly in the introduction. And uh, this weekend would be the weekend of October 13th and 14th. It's actually going to be the 13th here in Whitefish, Montana, which is, oh, 10 or 12 miles uh, outside of where I'm broadcasting here in Kalispell. Uh, now, Ammon, I wanted to take a, just, a, just a, a short amount of time here and talk a little bit about some of the resistance that we're getting for the, uh, for the program and then uh, talk about the program in general and then we can talk about you know what you're what you're going to present when uh, when you uh, when you come there on set when you come here to Montana on Saturday. So I don't know, uh, Am, if you've been following locally what's been going on here, or if uh, the the uh, event coordinators have been sending you any of the clips from the newspapers. But you are um, really basically, if you rely on what they wanted to say, I mean that people should lock their children in the house and. Uh, make sure that all the windows are barred when you guys come into Whitefish, because man, it's you. I mean, what what a wrecking crew you you, you and your you and your cohorts are. What do you think about all this pushback that we're getting here, I mean, from um from the townspeople and the group called Love Lives Here? That's right, folks. That's the name of the group that is that is protesting the you know most vociferously. It's called Love Lives Here. How ironic is that? Ammon, what do you say about all this? Well, I wonder if they got the memo that uh, the FBI was trying to accuse us of those things uh, for alternative motives, with an alternative motive. And we went through two federal trials and were found not guilty or all, and all charges were dismissed because it was proven that all the lies about us being dangerous, about us being uh, violent, uh, about us um, were, were, were proven in, in those court hearings to be lies that were made up to get the public to be afraid of us so that they can uh, basically destroy my family and take our property. 
And so I wonder if these groups, sounds like there's a couple, you know, three or four groups out there, if they actually got the memo that, hey, we just went through two federal trials over two years and we're found not guilty. And uh, so I, I kind of start with that, James, to begin with. Well, well, well hold on a minute here. I mean, you're, you're, uh, you're supposing that the other side lets the truth get in the way of, of actually the facts. <laughs> they, they don't, and they don't let the truth you know get in the I, way of the narrative. I uh, always no? give people, I always give people that benefit of doubt. And I, I, maybe it's uh to my fault, but I really do. I, I just want to, you know, maybe someone needs to get, get them informed that, uh, you know, what they are saying about and have been saying about my family and I has been proven not to be true. In fact, it's interesting. There was a, a BLM whistleblower. He was the head uh, investigator on the this case with my father and all of that. And um, uh, the prosecutors, the U.S. prosecutors, were acting, and the BLM, his own agency, um, were acting in such misconduct that he couldn't keep his mouth shut anymore. So he wrote a 17-page letter uh, to... Uh, someone in the Department of Justice, and we got a hold of that letter, and it exposes uh, just tremendous corruption, um, tremendous uh, misconduct, lies, covers up, cover up. I mean, they even, they even, uh, he even uncovered how the FBI had a kill list, or Dan Love, who was the uh, the head BLM agent over the operation that came against my family, he had a kill list. Uh, and then the FBI had poster boards with red X's through it. And one of those red X's we know for certain was my father. And that's just a touch. Uh, we we uh, found out through the discovery and through this Wooten letter that uh, the, all of this that they uh, said that my family was and has done was was made up, that it was fabricated in order to um, cast a, a wicked picture over my family so the people would have no problem with the FBI, the Bureau of Land Management, U.S. Forest Service, all those federal agencies coming and destroying my family. And so I would just want these groups to, um, you know, get the memo, I guess. Well, you know, I can say here, I have, uh, I know most all the members of your family, I've been to your parents house on numerous occasion occasions uh interviewed your dad interviewed uh carol um and i have to say i can i can say here um without hesitation that uh Ammon, you have one of the you know i think one of the finest families that i've ever had the uh you know the good pleasure of of meeting and uh and interacting with and you guys are really patriots you stood up you stood up when a lot of others would have uh, would have folded, and a lot of others did. A lot of others did fold, and they did give in. Uh, but you certainly stood up for liberty. And um, I know it doesn't seem like this now, perhaps because it's not very too. It's still pretty close to the event. But I think as you look back in history, you'll find out that you and your family literally certainly changed America. Um, perhaps, perhaps the world. Uh, and an outside chance, perhaps the world, but certainly you changed America. You changed a lot of things when you guys stood up and uh, that day uh, in 2014. So I just want to say that from where I'm sitting, um, I, uh, I, 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 I wholeheartedly refute all of those claims that have been made against you, my friend. Yeah. That's for sure. Well, well, thank you. And one who's been in my, you know, my parents' home that I was raised in, one who has, you know, interviewed my father and seen actual the ranch and the circumstances in which, you know, we were raised, you have a pretty good gauge on who we really are. And we, we're just a, we're just an American family. Uh, my dad's a rancher and I'm a rancher's son. And it's what, what they have done and the lies that they have casted upon my father and my family has only been, uh, you know, done in an effort to uh, demonize or to isolate, firstly, you know, to get to isolate my family, then to demonize them and so they can destroy them. And the same thing's happening up in Montana. They're trying to, to 
you know, cast this anti-government uh, fear, uh, you know, mongering among the people because that's how these people work. That's the realm in which they work in it. They work in fear uh, and and uh, they react. They try to get people to react off of fear. Um, it usually never works. It usually backfires because in general, people, you know, don't respond to fear the way that those that are trying to cast the fear want them to. And so I imagine it's probably just sparked more uh, desire for people to actually come and, and uh, listen to what we have to say. And my, my message is going to be pretty simple. I see here on the agenda or the program here, they have the title of my talk, How the West Was Won. <clears throat> I think that's pretty. Uh, and then they, underneath my name, it says Defe Defeating the Outlaws. And I think that's a pretty good uh, description of what I'm going to talk about. Uh, um, probably 20, it was 20 years ago or so, <clears throat> excuse me, when a lot of these attacks really started to come evident of, on the ranching community, we were going around, you know, I was very young, going around to try to help these other ranchers when the Bureau, Bureau of Land Management or Forest Service would come to take their cattle and stuff away. Um, take their ranches away. We'd come and protest them. We called it picketing. And one of the signs that we built was, uh, has the West been won or has the fight just begun? And, um, you know, I kind of propose that to you right now. You know, has the West been won or has the fight just begun? Because there's a full history of how these modern day robbers, these modern day conquerors, uh, in the name of federal agencies or even federal agents, uh, are stealing the rights of the people and their land and their the rights to the resources, their property, away from the people in the West. Well, so true. <clears throat> so true, but well put. And, you know, I wanted to get your comment, if I could, on Jeanette Finnecombe is going to be at the event, and she's going to be showing the uh, the film, which I haven't seen yet, about Lavoie. And, uh, you know, Ammon, that could have been you or a variety of other people that were in that uh, in that truck um, because I think they were out for blood that night, it seemed, uh, that day. And um, you are certain, I know there's, some, there's been a court case already, one court case with, I believe, one of the, um, was it the Idaho troopers, perhaps? Idaho State Police, I believe, or um, I think it was. At any rate, what do you think ultimately is going to happen now that we've seen, um, and I still haven't had a chance to watch the whole thing, but uh, James O'Keefe came out and um, really pretty much scorched Kate Brown. Um, what do you think is going to happen there with the Lavoie Finicum, um, uh situation? Do you think that people are going to actually is it, is it going to get some, is there going to be some justice? How about that? What do you think? Well, um, I have come to the conclusion, and right or wrong, that. Uh, there's not much justice found in the federal court system. And so I'm always skeptical when someone wants to step into, you know, that uh, arena and try to get justice. Um, and people say, well, you guys went into it and you were, you know, you're free. You now found that. And I would say that without any hesitation, reservation in what I say, what happened to us was not justice. <laughs> I mean, it was not justice. Now, and it was by the hand of God that we were delivered. Uh, and many miracles happened literally from uh, things being uncovered in, a, in a, just a tremendous timely manner to certain people coming forth uh, to, you know, uh, different uh, events, you know, but what happened to us in the federal court? Uh, system was not justice. And I hesitate to be optimistic about uh, getting justice, as we say, uh, for Lavoie um, in a federal court. Uh, the very people who, you know, crafted and orchestrated and set in place the uh, killing of Lavoie in the first place. And, and my dad always said, I, I've said this a hundred times or more, but my dad said, going into a federal court, against the federal government uh, on issues where the federal government is claiming 
uh, property with federal prosecutors and federal rules of regulations is like a man coming into your home and he beats up your wife and children, so you take him to court to get justice. And they say, I'll arise for the honorable judge. In walks a man with a black robe, and he's the very man that beat up your wife and children. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because I was just at a, uh, I was at a federal, uh, I had to appear at a federal tw- trial as a witness here, oh, a couple of months back. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because I remember, I remember um, sitting in the, Afterwards, you can't go in before uh, you testify. So after I testified, I was sitting in the courtroom there watching the trial proceed. And I was looking at the prosecutor, the FBI guy, the judge. And then you have in cases where you have a um, you have a, uh, um, a, pro- um, a public defender, all those people get paid from the same pool of money. The judge, the FBI, the federal prosecutor. And the public defender, the, the the government signs all their checks. So you're the only one, the defendant. You seem to be the only one that's really the independent party in that whole transaction. It just seems to me that all the, the odds seem to be greatly stacked against the average fellow like you and I. It absolutely is. You're the only one not getting paid. And all of the others are dependent on that you know, branch or, or that level of government, if you will, they're dependent on them. And it even goes further than that because the judges are usually always somebody who was either a prosecutor or a public defender, and usually more than not a prosecutor, but not always. Um, and so now you have a judge who is um, sitting on the seat and part of the very group that basically is down there uh, prosecuting you or, you know, uh, being a pretend defender. And so and 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 they also have the power that if you don't kind of uh, align yourself with the, you know, the group, uh, meaning if you really defend your client and uh, oh, offend them then you'll be ousted. And usually the judge is the one who decides who gets the case. And, you know, there's a whole process. And and basically it has become a system where they cannot and will not, in most cases, defend their clients. And proof of that was in Oregon when I was acquitted on all charges, meaning all 12 jurors found me not guilty on all charges. Um, it wasn't 20 minutes later uh, give or take a little bit, that the U.S. Marshals tased my attorney in the courtroom. And uh, ultimately what it come down to is they were mad at him because he actually defended me. Now, was, that, was that Clayman? Was that Clayman, Roger Roots, one of those two guys? No, neither, neither one of them were my attorney. It was Marcus Mumford. Okay, okay. Yeah, and kind of to give you an understanding again how, how the, you know, the Lord protected us, is he, you know, it was put in my heart long before the trial that I needed to get somebody who did not practice in that district. And uh, also I needed to get a private attorney. And so that's what we did. Marcus Mumford did not practice in Oregon. He had to go in there what's called pro hoc vice uh, and, uh, and practice under another license. Um, And what that allowed him to do was it allowed him to be able to speak his mind, truly defend me, because he knew that his living didn't depend on, uh, you know, pandering to the the prosecutors and pandering to the judge. And they still, after it was done, they took his license away to practice in Oregon. So they tased him, arrested him. Um, you know, and then they tried to prosecute him and ultimately took his license away to practice in Oregon. And they're, they're pushing to try to take his license away to practice altogether anywhere. And he's fighting that simply because he stood up and defended me. Yeah, that's just, that's despicable to say the least that, that, that is despicable. That's just the one more in the long, long list of abuses that is um, 
that really is perpetrated by the feds and and the overall the judiciary system in general. I mean, it's 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 wrecked, man. I mean, the judicial system is wrecked. I know they're trying to get other, you know, people uh, uh, that have, let's say, more constitutionally minded the viewpoints in. But I'd say the swamp is deep and it's dirty. I mean, it well, really and is, the, man. the judicial system, James, has to be stripped. It has to be stripped. Uh, because it is, you can't put, you know, constitutionally minded in a system that's unconstitutional or unethical and expect them to try to somehow bring, make it justice. It won't work. It needs to be stripped because what is that our system has been created or, you know, this system now has evolved or, you know, degenerated to a point where, it is about a prosecutor uh, winning. It is a racket. It's about basically uh, getting uh, as much money as you can out of the trial, uh, then getting as much money as you can out of you know the um, the imprisonment of the person. And uh, it's also and it's not based upon like someone being victimized and then making sure that that victim is restored its damages. In many cases, there's a victim who, you know, experienced theft or, you know, or even worse, and uh, they're not even, uh, there's no restitution even given to the victim. The restitution is actually required and given to the state or to, you know, to the government. And the whole thing is, is just, it's just damaged. It's, it's damaged and it's, it needs to be stripped and, and built back up. We already have a good pattern for it. Uh, we were we did it in our early years of being a nation, and uh, other other nations have done it, you know, in history correctly. Where basically it's a penal system based upon restitution and not incarceration. Well, you know, Emma, we could go on and on here. I wanted to keep this uh, for sake of brevity. We're going to uh, <clears throat> we're going to shut it down here right now. But you'll be in town here. I'll be recording the entire event this weekend. Um, I'm not sure when you're coming into town, but hopefully we can, uh, I can pull you aside in a side room there at some point. Maybe we can get a quick, uh, get some FaceTime, you know, get a, an actual video interview when yeah. you come to town. So that'd be good. So I, I have to ask, um, sure. Did you, did the, did they really go to the sheriff to try to stop me from coming and speaking? Oh yeah. They went to the sheriff. Yeah, they did. They, well, they want the whole event stopped. Yeah. They want the whole event so stopped. It, isn't that is interesting of how these people view the right to, to speak, you know, the right, the First Amendment rights, or at least the, the rights that are protected in the First Amendment. It's very interesting how they view. And this is exactly what I'm going to be talking about. They think that it is OK to use the force of law to take rights away. And and their and the proof of that is their very act in going to the sheriff to try to take my right away to speak to the people in that area. Well, you know, and it is, you know, and and it goes and it certainly goes, I think, deeper than that. There's a psychological aspect to it as well, where you know, there's a coping skills, it, you know, and I, I'm I'm just I'm not I'm not I'm just going over this in general broad terms. But, you know, there, it says something about a person when they don't have the sufficient coping skills to be able to allow another person to have an opposing viewpoint and to voice that bu viewpoint publicly. Uh, and rather than coming back with better ideas, like you said, they can't cope with that. So they have to try to get the law and the authority to shut it down. So there's some there, these people, there's more to them than just on the surface, them not wanting to hear us. There's there's some, I think, sadly. You know, without getting too deep into things here, but there's, sadly, there's uh, there's like a psych there's like a psychological breakdown or some sort of a psychological deficiency in some of these people, and I don't say that in a mean way, I really don't. I think really, almost clinically speaking, in a sense, there's really something wrong. There's really something wrong with the wiring up there, Ammon. I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I mean, I don't well. want to be cruel, but I mean, <laughs> what do you think? I mean. We they have, on for they another have, two minutes here. Go ahead. They have quite an influence, though, you know. Uh, and I think for whatever reason, uh, people, you know, find at some point some logic in it or at least they prescribe to it. 
or subscribe to it because, uh, but to me, it doesn't make sense. I mean, you know, to force somebody, you know, to, to, to believe the way that you're, you believe, uh, it just, it's just wrong in every way. Yet that's what they do. They literally go into the law they change the policies and regulations. They infiltrate different systems. And the reason they do it is to influence or to change things uh, so that their belief system will be enforced. And uh, I agree, it's, it doesn't make sense. We'll leave it on that note right there, Emin. And uh, look forward to seeing you here just in a couple of days now. Um, and uh, everyone, please, if you want to learn more about this event, you can go to the website This West is our west.com that's this west is our west.com the event is being held at the grouse mountain lodge uh this saturday which would be the 13th from 8 a.m to 6 p.m uh yours truly will be there on camera and uh, ammon and many other great speakers will be there as well so if you're in the flathead valley area come on out and uh i'm sure ammon i don't want to speak for you but i'm sure it's going to be an event here. We're not talking about a thriving metropolis here in Flathead Valley. So I'm quite certain there'll be plenty of time if people want to come and speak to you, maybe have a question for you, you know, off stage. I'm sure that there'll be time for you to be able to speak to, to the fine people here of Montana if they want to uh, if they want to talk to you during the event. So come on out to uh, Whitefish. Is there anything that you want to say here, Ammon, before we uh, before we end this interview? Uh, no, just kind of a little shout out. I mean, the speakers at this event uh, are tremendous. I've heard some of them before. Um, and so I believe it'll be well worth your time and uh, it'll be very informational. And uh, there's a reason why these people do not want you to hear what we are going to be speaking about. Um, and so I encourage you to come. That's a great point. That's a great point. Real quick. I'll go down the list. Dan Happel, Elaine William, Matt, Sh Elaine Wilman, Matt Shea, Carrie White, yourself, Norm Semenko, Jeanette Finnicum, Alex Newman. It's the place to be this weekend here is the, it's the place to be here in Whitefish, Montana this weekend. If you're interested in this type of, uh, this type of, uh, speakers, uh, cause there's a lot of great ones. Hey, Amen. looking forward so much to seeing you here in a couple of days and, um, travel safe, travel safe. And, uh, we, uh, we welcome you here to Flathead Valley and looking forward to it, my friend. Thanks, James. Look forward to seeing you. Very good. Until next time, this is James White from Northwest Liberty News saying bye now. Northwest Liberty News.